I'm Jana Banana, and I'm living lucky. Lucky enough to have a name that rhymes with a quirky, smiley, yellow fruit. My first day of kindergarten, my music teacher actually says, circle up, class. Get over here, Jana Banana. Now, because I'm from such a small town in Kansas, my music teacher was also my mom. <laughs> And as soon as Jana Banana came out of her mouth, the entire class busts out laughing. Now, I, on the other hand, didn't think it was so funny. In fact, I went home and I thought, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to me. Everyone's calling me Jana Banana. Funny thing, the second day of school, the teacher says, let's go around and see if we can remember everybody's names. And as she pointed to each student, silence. Nobody can remember anyone's name until she points to me and the class says, Jana, Jana Banana, lucky me. You see, we can't always control our circumstances, but we can control the way we perceive them. That's why I'm here to share a tool I call radical gratitude. It's not only being grateful for the highs in life, but also the lows when life isn't quite working out the way we think it should. It's being grateful for not only the negative, but also the positive, the challenges, the obstacles, the adversity in life. Because let me just tell you, life is always working in our favor. When I was, yeah, give me a hand for that. When I was 15 years old, I was a freshman in high school and life, I'm telling you, it was a good year for me. I was playing on the varsity basketball team. I think we, we got third at state that year. I loved playing competitive sports. It was a hobby I shared with my dad. I was a feature baton twirler in our band, and that year we had the opportunity to march at the Air Force Academy. I distinctly remember twirling in front of the cadets, and as I tossed my baton up, they would cheer with their hankies. I wanted to inspire audiences all over the world. And boys, 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 boys. I was definitely noticing boys that year, and they were noticing me too. Ah, it was such a great year. On May 23rd, 1990, I was the passenger in a car accident and broke my back. Immediately, I felt a rubber band almost around my chest. And just like that, my life changed. I remember waiting for the ambulance and saying aloud, please don't let me be paralyzed. And simultaneously thinking, I don't even really know what that word means. I was taken to a nearby hospital, had surgery. I was in intensive care. And for the first eight weeks, I stared at the ceiling, crying, thinking, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to me. All of my dreams, my sports, all of my friends were on my team. And even though we would complain about running lines, it was all I could think about. I just wanted to remember what it felt like. And my baton, all of the years of gymnastics and dance lessons, all of the practices, was it just gone? And boys, Who's going to want to date me? I can't walk. I can't feel. My thoughts were just spiraling. And then, a funny thing. I was sitting in the lobby of my rehab hospital when a quadriplegic comes in in his electric wheelchair and he started flirting with me. <laughs> and he says, hey, Blondie. Scratch my nose for me, will ya? <laughs> I know, not really a pickup line I would suggest. <sighs> he was very adamant about this scratch on his face. He was paralyzed from the neck down, and 
I thought it was really gross, to be honest with you, but I wanted to help him out, and he was quite charming, I must say. And so I reached over, and I scratched his nose for him, and when I did so, he says to me, you have no idea how lucky you are. How lucky I am. How lucky am I? How lucky am I? When was the last time you asked yourself that question? How lucky am I? Because for the first time since my accident, I went to bed that night, and as I looked at that ceiling, instead of crying, I got out a pen and I started making a gratitude list of all the things I have. I have my hands, I have my arms, I have my fingers, I have my mobility, I have my family, I have my personality, I have my good looks and my charm and my ability to captivate this audience. <laughs> you see, he gave me one of the biggest gifts that day. It was a shift in my perception. And instead of focusing on what I had lost, all of a sudden I was focusing on what I had. Instead of focusing on what I can't do, I'm focusing on what I can. Instead of focusing on my disability, I'm focusing on my ability. And what resulted was one of the biggest success cycles that I ever could have imagined. It started by me becoming Kansas Junior Miss, the first person in a wheelchair to ever enter and win, all the way from, thank you, <laughs> all the way to meeting presidents, talk shows, a speaking circuit, traveling internationally, to becoming a three-time Paralympian. 14 years after my accident in 2004, I won a gold medal in Athens, Greece in wheelchair basketball. I landed my dream job as a radio personality, Jana Banana. That's a tie back. Thank you. And the biggest jackpot of all, I met my husband, Jason. The three things I was most concerned about in that hospital, sports, inspiring audiences, and falling in love, all three things had come to fruition. Life is always working in our favor. Yeah. Now, I have to admit, that time span in my life was maybe one of the hardest 14 years of my life, but for the most part, there was an upward trajectory, and the biggest ingredient was gratitude. However, life is not always about the ups. And I hit a point in my life where I needed to evolve, and so did my gratitude practice. So let's take this to the next level, shall we? Today we are talking about Radical gratitude. So, welcome to my 30s. Ooh. <laughs> I reached a point in my life where I hit a plateau. And if I'm to be completely real, I was blurring some personal lines between am I just grateful or am I settling? Can anyone relate? Yeah, yeah. I heard some mumbling. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> My friends were all having kids, starting families, just wasn't happening for me. My inner circles, we were all drowning ourselves in wine, having complaining competitions. My finances had become a little stagnant, along with my career. And the more I tried to stand up for myself, asking for pay raises, maybe a little promotion, I heard things like, banana, aren't you just grateful to have a job? Or things like, do you know how many people would do your job for free? 
or the best was when my boss actually tried to convince me, Banana, you live in Florida. We pay you in sunshine. Ooh, yeah. To be honest with you, I was getting tired. I was tired of going extra just to get to the starting line. And life was wearing me down. And at that time, I started hearing this little voice inside my soul. And it was saying, Jana, there's something bigger and better. I didn't know what to do with this voice, so I tried to ignore it. And the more I tried to ignore it, it just kept getting louder. Jana, there's something bigger and better. To the point where it started manifesting itself physically. I started getting sick. I started not being able to sleep at night. I started having panic attacks, anxiety, to the point where my husband said, you know what, Jana, I think you need a vacation. He's a good husband. <laughs> so I found myself in Tanzania on safari in the middle of the Serengeti. We're in our caravan and our driver Eustace says, Gina Banana, look. And over in a distance, they looked so small, almost like ants. A line of elephants marching, trunk to tail, trunk to tail. I said, Eustace, where are they going? I'll never forget his answer. He says, somewhere very special. Later that night, we pull into our camp. We arrange to go out into the bush early that next morning. However, I wasn't feeling well. We're on our dream vacation and I decide to stay in bed. I'm awakened by my walkie talkie later that morning. <coughs> Jenna Benina, do not move. You are in extreme danger. What? I got to see what's happening. So I hop out of bed, I get in my wheelchair, and I head over to the edge of my tent. Oh, and I look out. I am surrounded by elephants. 30 to 40 of them. They are all around me. And directly in front of me is this baby elephant about six feet mama hovering over it and we locked eyes and in that moment i felt this energy it was so calm peaceful and i believed i believed that there was something bigger and better i believed in my intuition i believed that voice i believed in this knowing this certainty I just knew it was time to grow. It's what Michael Beckwith often refers to as that moment in which your conditions are met in order for you to fulfill your higher potential. It was the inspiration I needed in order for me to break out of my complacency bubble. Now, mind you, at that time in my life, like many people, I had been collecting disappointments, negativity, rejections, toxic self-talk. And what proceeded after that was a reflection of those inner thoughts. Because I got on a plane and I went home and I decided I'm going to quit my job and make some changes but I was quickly paralyzed by fear, doubt, and uncertainty. What? You're quitting your job because of an elephant? What? Are you crazy? <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna pay your bills? Are you losing it? I, I don't understand. All of a sudden, I'm more concerned about, oh my gosh, people think I'm nuts. I, I don't, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. I don't have a plan. I start cutting myself off from friends 
and family. I stop going places because I don't have an answer. I don't know. I start questioning my beliefs. And next thing you know, I'm isolating myself, not leaving the house. I start making bad decisions. I start stop exercising. I start eating crap. I gain 33 pounds. And next thing you know, I'm trying to, to transfer and I fall. I break my leg in three places and I'm in bed, immobile, powerless, dependent, and I'm looking at that damn ceiling. <laughs> Except this time, I'm looking at it through the distorted lens of a dark, depressed 40-year-old. How lucky am I? How lucky am I? Almost sarcastically, I got out my pen and I started writing down all the crappiest things that have ever happened in my life. I am so grateful to be so severely depressed I can't even get out of bed. I am so grateful that my boss chose to pay me in sunshine. <laughs> and I am so grateful to spend my life paralyzed. And the words stopped me in my tracks. The wound is that deep. Because I never thought that I'd be writing it. I'd always found gratitude for my ability. But I never thought I would be grateful for my disability. And as my hand started writing, what came out was astonishing. The gifts that have been given to me in my life have been so beautiful. All the way from the deeper connections, the love, all of the caring and compassion, the opportunities, the unique perspectives, the ability to help others, pursuing music and art. My husband, and as I went down the list, I am so grateful for my depression because it allowed me to know God. You see, the things that I perceive to be the worst things in my life have led me to the things that make me most proud to be me. Adversity is your advantage. And when you're grateful for it, there's power because it will help you unveil a new level of ability. It's called invincibility. So the next time you face an obstacle, a struggle, a pitfall, ask yourself the questions that lead to radical gratitude. What's great about this? How can I grow? How is this serving me? How lucky am I? I'm Jana Banana, and I'm living lucky.